All right, kids. Today we're taking a look at another classic problem where we've got a block sitting on a tilted surface. And that block is connected by a string that runs up over a pulley to another hanging block. And today, I'm going to show you how to use force in order to solve for the acceleration of each of these blocks, as well as the tension in both sides of the string. Now, this entire problem is centered around Newton's second law. And so the first thing we're going to do is apply Newton's second law to each of these blocks. And of course, that means we get to draw a free body diagram. Now, starting with this block over here, I'm going to call that block number one. There's several forces acting on this block, the first being gravity. Then there's the normal force, as well as the tension in this string. And I'm not going to call that tension just T, I'm going to call it T sub 1, or the tension in the string which is connected to block number 1. Now applying Newton's second law within the plane of this hill, there's actually two forces which are going to cause the block to accelerate. The first being T1, and the other being the component of gravity which is down the hill. And I'm going to call that component FD for the force down the hill. Now, in order to fit these two forces, tension and force down the hill, into Newton's second law, we need to establish a positive direction. So in this problem, we're going to say that anything up the hill is in the positive direction. And anything acting downward over here is also going to be in the positive direction. And I'll talk more about that in a little bit. But getting back to Newton's second law, the sum of all forces on this block is just T1, which is acting in the positive direction, minus, because it's down the hill, the force down the hill. And we're going to set that equal to M1A. Now we can expand out this FD term, because FD for a block on a hill is going to be Mg sine theta, where theta is the angle of the hill. Now, subbing that in right here, we get an expression relating the forces acting on this block to the actual acceleration of this block. But the issue here is we don't know T1 and we don't know A. So we're going to have to look at these other objects in order to set up a system of equations that we can use to solve for both the tension as well as the actual acceleration. So looking next at block 2. On block two, there's again going to be the force by gravity acting downward. That's going to be M2G. And there's going to be the tension in the string acting upward, slowing the block down. Now since this segment of string is connected to block two, I'm not going to call this T1 like I did over here. I'm going to call it T2 for the tension in the string connected to block two. And for this block right here, we're going to apply Newton's second law in the vertical axis. But going back to our positive direction, we decided that anything which made this block move up the hill was positive, and that corresponds to the downward motion of this block right here, which means downward is actually going to be the positive direction for this block. That means M2G is going to be in the positive direction, and then we're going to have T2 acting in the negative direction. So M2G minus T2, that's the net force on this block, is going to equal M2. A. Now we've managed to come up with two equations here. One from block one, the other from block two. The issue is we have three unknowns, T1, T2, and the acceleration. So we're going to need to generate a third equation in order to solve for any of these unknowns. And that means taking a look at our third object, and that is the pulley. Now, because this pulley is fixed around some axis, it's not going to move in a linear fashion like these blocks, which means we can't apply Newton's second law to the pulley. But because this pulley is going to rotate as the string runs over it, we can apply Newton's second law in a circle, or really a torque equation, to the pulley. Now, in a circle, Newton's second law says that the sum of all torques acting on an object is equal to I, the rotational moment of inertia of that object, multiplied by alpha, the angular acceleration of that object. So rather than looking at the sum of all forces acting on the pulley, we're going to look at the sum of all torques which are acting on the pulley. Now, there's three forces which are acting on this pulley. I'm really only concerned with two. 
The first being the tension in this string right here, which is acting to rotate the pulley counterclockwise. Realize that tension is T1, the same T1 we came up with over here. On the other side of the pulley, the string is pulling down with some force, I'm going to call that T2. Again, that's the same tension that we saw over here for block M2. Now the third force, which we're really not concerned with in this problem, is the force by this axle or support right here, which is keeping the, the pulley from just shooting this way as it's pulled on by the string. And that force plays no role in the solution to this problem, so I'm not going to show it in the free body diagram. Now you may be wondering at this point, shouldn't T1 and T2 just be the same? In the past, when we had massless pulleys, that was true. But in this case, now that there's some mass and radius to this pulley, these two tensions have to be different. And let me explain why. See, if these two tensions were equal in magnitude, they would be producing torques in opposite directions. This tension trying to rotate the pulley counterclockwise, this tension trying to make the pulley rotate clockwise. And so if these two forces were the same, and they're both acting at the same radius, the torque from the two forces would cancel out, and this pulley wouldn't rotate at all. And of course, the pulley does have to rotate. If this block moves up, the string's going to run over this pulley, and that pulley's going to turn with the string. So going down here to Newton's second law in a circle, in the positive direction, we're going to have T2 producing a torque. So T2 is going to be acting at some radius, that is the distance from the middle of this axle to the edge of the pulley, capital R. Now in the opposite direction, we've got T1, again acting at a radius R, but those two forces are both producing torques. And those torques, or really the net torque, is going to cause the rotational inertia of this pulley, that is I, I'm just going to call I of the pulley for now, to go through some angular acceleration. Now this pulley is a disc, which means the inertia of the pulley is one half m r squared. Now if you want to see where the inertia of a disc comes from and how it's derived, just click up here. I've got a video on precisely that. Now we're going to sub this in, but there's one more substitution that we're going to have to make. You'll see Newton's second law in a circle uses alpha, or angular acceleration, whereas Newton's second law in a straight line used A for linear acceleration. And we're trying to solve for the linear acceleration of these blocks, which means we've got to make this alpha go away. Now alpha, the angular acceleration, is given by A, the linear acceleration, over R, the radius of this disk or pulley as it rotates. So subbing both of these functions in right here, we get this expression. Now the nice part about this, you'll notice, is that the radius of this pulley starts canceling out. It cancels out here, and then it's on both sides of the equal sign, so it cancels out again, and we're left with this function, which relates our tensions to the linear acceleration of these blocks. I realize what we've really come up with here is our third equation relating these two equations with three unknowns to the pulley. So rearranging each of these equations for T1 and T2, and then subbing those equations into this equation, we can rearrange this equation for A. We get this equation, which at first glance doesn't look all that profound, but if you look in the numerator here, really what we have is this term, which is the force downward by gravity on this block, minus this other term, which is the force down the hill on this block over here. Really what this numerator is telling us is there's a tug of war going on here between the tendency of this whole system to move in the positive direction from gravity pulling this block downward, and the whole system to move in the negative direction from gravity pulling this block in the negative direction. In fact, if this block was heavy enough, this entire system would in fact move down the hill here, or in the negative direction. That is to say, this term would be greater than this one. And looking in the denominator, 
You can see I missed a one half here. Whoops. But more importantly, you'll see that the pulley, even though it's not actually moving in a line, is going to rotate. And this pulley, which has some mass, we're just calling it MP, is going to behave as though it's just some mass which is being drug along with some total mass or magnitude that's half of the actual mass of the pulley. So this is how you solve what's called a tilted atwood machine when there's pulley mass involved. I hope you found this useful. And on that note, that's all for now.